Do you it. disgust me. You're the problems with this country. Recap. You're the problems. You're the guys that are kneeling on the people's necks. Okay, put the camera down. I'm Don't talking touch it. Don't touch it. Get on the ground. Oh, I'm talking to you. I can't believe a chief, you know, a chief would do that, bro, to a human being, bro. He didn't have to choke me out, but I would have preferred to get tased, bro. I didn't see that coming, bro. He got me, bro. He choked me out, bro. He took me down, bro. He kept choking me and choking me. Maybe he passed out, bro. I woke up and he was still there on top of me, bro. Choking me, bro. Looks like it. Hello, I'm Justin Pulliam. Leon Valley City Councilman Will Bradshaw was morally outraged, as we all should be, by the arrest of Olin Yarnell in the middle of the night after a late city council meeting in Leon Valley. The alleged offense occurred over a year ago, and the complainant is establishment counselor Monica Alcaser, who Mr. Yarnell petitioned to remove via recall election. Sir, you're going to turn the camera off or step outside. Uh, the no, other officer said to. it was okay. We're allowed to, Doc. The supervisor yeah, said. Yeah. The other officer. Did you already told him? Yep. No, the other officer. As long okay. as we leave the opening. Can y'all not block the entrance, please? I'm supposed to represent the citizens. And if a citizen getting their life put in danger does not bother you, then... I'm sorry, then I have to ask, what's wrong with you? I, I'm sorry. It's just, I don't understand how the rest of the council is not outraged. And I do know why, because it's all a setup. It's all planned. Ms. Yarnell has been targeted from as long as I've been on the council. The chief tried to file charges against him from the uh, Pilgrim Cleaners incident. There's just multiple times where they've been, there's a pattern of behavior. And actually, this agenda item, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the complaint wasn't made against me until after there was a there was a council meeting in between. There was a council meeting after the Olin Yarn Allen Senate, and I wanted to put an item on the agenda to talk about. I made a motion to talk about it's supposed to be the next item on our agenda tonight. Fraud, abuse, waste of city funds by our chief of police and our city manager, and then a complaint was filed against me. Is that not retaliatory? Is that not I'm getting too close? I'm I'm pointing out what's going on in the city, so we got to get rid of Council Bradshaw and we got to do it quickly because we can't have this. And now Chief Joseph Audio and the Leon Valley Police Department are attacking Bradshaw in an attempt to remove him from office. You already know what the answer is to that, that I can do that. And so in this case, in this case, this is against, this is not council on council, this is the staff, this is the police department. Um, and I just feel like l law enforcement in general right now is very fragile because of those few bad apples out there. And I don't want to believe that our law enforcement, in fact, I don't believe that they are bad apples. But if we do have any, I absolutely vow and commit to get rid of them. So Baggio's political establishment is blasting Bradshaw for his remarks. But was he off the mark? Recently, Savaggio hired Elizabeth Montoya, who was fired from the San Antonio Police Department. Why did you hit me like that? Because you, you deserve that. it. I was going to punch her in her side because they say don't hit him in the face. Freaking hit her in the face. She's fine. You can call somebody else to, uh, to check her, but all we did was lay her on the ground. We didn't slam her. She's fine. She's faking it. Among other egregious actions, this was one of the things that she was disciplined for. I do just have a follow-up question for either the chief or Ms. Kensler. Has Leon Valley hired any officers who have put their foot on suspects' necks? Not that I know of, sir. If you read the newspaper, those three fired officers that you recently hired from San Antonio, one of them in 2015 put her foot on a suspect's neck. And I would tell you, don't believe everything you read, sir. So if they've been investigating you already, that's not something I spurred. 
that's something they probably figured out on their own. So, but it goes into a trend, and it's a trend of mine. And so last council meeting, at the, towards the end, uh, Mr. Bradshaw brought up the fact that we, um, not too long ago, hired a um, Leon Valley police officer that stood on somebody's neck. So um, anybody from home can go to changeleonvalley.com slash fired from SAPD, and you'll see all of the suspension documents from the officers that were terminated from San Antonio Police Department that Leon Valley later, or recently hired, really. Um, and so I'm going to read a little part from the suspension people. Officer Elizabeth J. Montoya kicked uh, Mr. Flores in the stomach area while he was still handcuffed and lying on the ground. Shortly afterward, Officer Montoya is observed putting her right foot onto Mr. Flores, Flores's neck area. Officer Montoya's actions brought reproach and discredit to both the department and herself. And then if you're looking at the document at home, you'll see her signature is actually about two and a half inches below that, um, where she signed her indefinite suspension paperwork. Well, shortly after, Leon Valley City hired this officer. But what about Chief Savaggio? What has he done? This is what happened when YouTuber Mexican Padilla live streamed the back office of City Hall. The room where Savaggio and city manager Kelly Kunstler scheme about eliminating their political opponents. What's that over there, man? Oh, uh, it's just the admin wing. Uh, it's open. To the public, too? Yeah, go ahead. Can you push it? Thanks. They're going to take forever to get the complaint form, so I decided to take a little. Whoa. Oh, snag. Need some help, sir? You need some help, sir? No. Okay, this is a restricted ayuda. area of the of the place here. What are you doing back here? No ocupa ayuda. What are you doing back here, sir? No ocupa ayuda, vete pa allá. What are you doing back here, sir? Vete pa allá. Okay, put the camera down. I'm Don't talking touches. to you. Don't me touches, pendejo. Oh, uh, no. I'm talking to you. You're in a restricted area. You are no not me allowed taches, back here. Pendejo. You need to leave. No me taches, baboso. You, <laughs> sir, you're in a restricted area. Okay? You're in a restricted area and you must leave. Okay? Go down there and get the officer, the other officer. Don't fucking touch me. You were under no! arrest. No. You were under no. arrest. Get off me. You were get under off arrest. Me. Get off get me. Get on the ground. Get off me. Then you just let me in. Get sir. on the That's ground. I asked for a video of the arrest, but Leon Valley responded only with excuses. The city secretary said, I did check with the LVPD regarding video of any type, and also, unfortunately, according to staff, a lot of that has already been dumped from the recording system. They also refused to release Padilla's GoPro and static video recordings. Had he not have live streamed, we'd have nothing. If the chief did nothing wrong and Padilla did all of the things that they claim he did, then what do they have to hide? I've exclusively obtained new video of Padilla's transport to the San Antonio jail. He explained exactly what happened to him. To torture somebody, bro, like that, you already choking them out, bro. He was choking me out, bro. Like forever, bro. I wasn't moving, bro. I was, my hands were behind my back, getting my hands, bro. After he took me down, bro, I didn't resist, bro. I didn't follow him. You know, and he, he stuck his finger in my, my ear, bro. Like, I just can't believe someone could do that to anyone, bro. That's just, I don't know, bro. And he was just sticking his big finger, bro, in there, bro. Like, like if he was raping someone, bro, like, that's crazy, bro. I can't believe a chief, you know, a chief would do that, bro, to a human being, bro. And I was in moving, bro, and then one that just moved, squishing my foot hard, bro. You know, I'm not out there gang banging, you know, robbing people, bro, you know, put, pointing guns at you guys. I'm over here with a camera, bro, recording to see, you know, to see if I'm going to get off my, if anyone's going to violate my rights. And most of, most officers don't, bro. But this guy, bro, violated my rights. Got you, bro. I can't believe it, bro. I would be shocked, bro, for a while. That's crazy, bro. He's lucky in my ear hurts, bro. My head hurts real bad. My neck's probably broken, bro. I'm about to go get x-rays. 
Something's wrong with me, bro. He really hurt me, bro. And he's a chief, bro. The chief, right? He's a main maker. You know, and I was turned. I turned around, bro, to talk to the other cop. To so the other cop, like, hey, bro, you guys just said it was cool me recording, right? And then, bro, then he just jumps on me, bro, for no reason. For no reason. Just because I turned my back to him, bro. You don't pick someone. He could have tased me, bro. He didn't have to choke me out, bro. I would have preferred to get tased, bro. I didn't see that coming, bro. He got me, bro. He choked me out, bro. He took me down, bro. And he kept choking me and choking me. Then he passed out, bro. Woke up and he was still there on top of me, bro. Choking me, bro. So I panicked, started yelling for help, bro. Bro, something's wrong with me, bro. My neck's been broken, I think. Or something. I don't know, bro. He broke something, bro. I think. I'm not a doctor, bro. But it hurts, bro. My neck was cracking when he was doing that, bro. It cracked, bro. I thought I was dead, bro. I thought he was going to kill me, bro. When I heard something crack, I thought I was dead. I'm like, damn, I'm going to make it home to my poor kid for recording in public, in a public building, in our building. In our building, bro, that's taxpayer. And the thing is, bro, if you watch the video, bro, I just told the lady, bro, hey, uh, that's, that's the funny. I was waiting for a, a complaint form for that guy stepping the gas, bro. You know, trying to hit me in the parking lot. I was getting a complaint form, bro. And then I was walking over to kill some time, you know, and I told the lady, hey, man. Uh, is that accessible to the people, to the public? Is that public property? He said, oh, yeah, that's public. Open to the public. I go in there, bro, and boom, not even two minutes, bro. He started, he jumped on me, bro, started exceeding my camera, assaulting me. Did Savaggio do it? Was he on Padilla's neck? This is what Savaggio wrote in the police report. I had to restrain his head with his face away from me. We utilized empty hand techniques which included arm bars and handholds. Padilla remained on the floor controlled by officers until he calmed. Wow! Salvaggio himself admits to using physical force against Padilla's head, and it's possible that what actually happened is much worse than what was written in the police lie report. We can compare Padilla's recollection to the end of his live stream. We hear him shriek that they're breaking his leg. He's moaning and groaning, asking them to get off of him when Savaggio brags, Do you understand now? Uh, uh, Do you understand now? Get off me, you fucking you Padilla shouts about a finger in his ear. At the end, he cries, Stop pushing my face against the... And then the stream abruptly stops. Stop pushing my face against the We can only imagine what it must have been like after the stream was cut. Is it true that Leon Valley police actually train about how to quickly shut down live streams? What do you think happened in that hallway? Did Savaggio chokehold Padilla? Leave a video comment so your voice can be heard. The corrupt Leon Valley city administrators have a lot of secrets. And when you have that much to hide, it's hard to keep your story straight. The first time they released the police report, they redacted, marked out a few parts of it. And those secrets they tried to hide exposed their true motive and why they took down Padilla. On the right side of the screen is the first version that they released. On the left, I have the full version and I've highlighted in yellow the parts that they initially hid. Savaggio wrote that all officers and I thought that the AP may have a mental issue and would need to be emergency detained at the jail and or hospital. This was similar to Detective Jimmy Wells' report that said, I was not sure if he had a mental disorder or if he was gaining intel for something catastrophic. The similarity in these reports suggests a group project where they get the story straight. What's really going on here? The police are trying to make it seem like they don't know what was happening and that the YouTubers are crazy. In another redacted sentence, Wells let the cat out of the bag when he admitted that after he called the other detectives, he was advised that Jesus Padilla was in one of the groups that do audits of government entities. Yes, that's entities with an I. This officer then parked his car and went inside. I guess this guy, he's chopping all the law, man. These guys are good. I'm telling my viewers, sir, you guys are pretty good. You guys. I told him to relax. I'm just trying to relax. Move back inside. Can I get with you? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I was just going to go film the cop cars out in the back. And this guy just 
Death on the just trying to intimidate me. Are you recording all our cars? Yeah. Our, our police cars? Yeah, I was going to go record all the police cars, sir. And then this guy came at me all hard. Especially you don't go back in the gate right Oh, yeah, yeah, not in the gate. Yeah, I know that. They put him in play. Well, that busts their story that they didn't know what was happening. Padilla later went inside and requested a complaint form. Several minutes later, Slavagio engaged him. Slavagio was well aware of the First Amendment auditors. He's a board member of the Alamo Area Police Chiefs Association, and they regularly scheme against the auditors at their meetings. In March 2018, two months before Padilla went to Leon Valley, Almost Park Police Chief Rene Valenciano presented to the Chiefs about auditors. They also emailed Savaggio a copy of the presentation. In July 2018, Savaggio presented to the Chiefs about First Amendment auditors boasting about the arrest of Padilla and Jack Miller. Chief Valenciano of Almost Park gave another presentation about First Amendment auditors explaining his intelligence operations. They uncovered that auditors have a hierarchy in which C.J. Grisham of Open Carry, Texas is the leader, and that a local attorney assists auditors pro bono. Yes, that's what your tax dollars buy you, bumbling idiot government administrators. The Hollywood Park Police Chief wanted to sponsor additional training on First Amendment offenders. Back to the Padilla Police Report, this is what was hidden from Savaggio's narrative. While processing AP, it was learned that he was live streaming this event and had entered Leon Valley Municipal offices in order to agitate and start a confrontation with police officers. It also came to my knowledge that AP had recently acted in the same manner in several jurisdictions within the Bear County area where he was arrested as well. Upon completion of being processed, AP was transported to the city magistrate office on charges of Penal Code 2211 harassment of a public official, 3005 criminal trespass, and 3803 resisting arrest. AP's digital devices were secured as evidence. By the way, criminal charges are public information. They blatantly violated the law by marking those out. Why was Savaggio trying to hide this information from us? Leave a comment, let me know. Within an hour after the arrest, city manager Kelly Kunstler was sending out mass emails to everyone to give them a heads up. She knew that he was a First Amendment auditor and that they go to various cities and then place their videos on YouTube. She knew of his arrest by the Precinct 2 constables. She said it's an attempt to target government agencies for First Amendment violations and then use any formidable information for litigation. Yes, that long, detailed email was sent within an hour after his arrest. Probably not surprising to you by this point, Kunstler refused to provide a copy of that email in response to my open records request. But I found it elsewhere, and catch this part, she wrote, He eventually entered the restricted access area which is outside of the admin office, and Chief Savaggio caught him filming through the window into my office. As I've said before, Savaggio and Kunstler scheme against their political opponents in that back room of City Hall. Just an hour before Padilla's arrival, Kunstler sent an email about her ethical responsibility to stand up to loan city councilors. Likely a shot at Benny Martinez, it was sent to all the city council and then forwarded to Joe Savaggio. Ethics Corner, a unified city council is a beautiful thing. There's something special when a group of elected officials work together to adopt and support a single community vision and set of priorities. However, this is not always the case. The divisive political environment that exists in our nation can also influence local city councils. Having to stand up to a council member for attempting to encroach on the city manager's professional responsibilities is not something anyone would want to do but it is what each city manager should do. Yes, you've got that right. These city managers hide behind ethics as they illegally and immorally attack elected officials who they don't like. Kelly and Joe removed Councilman Benny Martinez last year, and now they're targeting Councilman Will Bradshaw. No way in heck are they going to allow Mexican Padilla to uncover those secrets. The San Antonio Fusion Center released a seven-page long auditor bolo the following day. It included Padilla in a lengthy discussion about auditor tactics. They admitted that they have been sharing information about First Amendment auditors in recent years. This was nothing new. 
Remember when Salvaggio raided Sheepdog's home? He said it was beautiful. He even thanked Jack for coming to Leon Valley. So Jack, you were beautiful today. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming to visit us. This is awesome. It seems to me like Savaggio had premeditated plans for YouTubers and was waiting on them to come to his town. And there's still more redacted from the report. Detective Brooks said, I have had interactions with individuals in the past who have tried to cause confrontations with the police while recording. And through Padilla's actions and words, I believe this was his goal. Through my investigation, I learned Padilla livestreamed the incident on YouTube. He also explained how he obtained a search warrant for the other cameras. Why did they redact all the parts about YouTube and auditing? Were they trying to change the narrative? Did they not want to make it look political? Finally, the most chilling government secret is that they're coming after you! Brooks requested copies of phone logs from all city employees who received messages or phone calls from any person requesting or commenting on information related to this incident. If you're the ones that are out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy, well just know, we've all got your number now, we're going to be keeping track of all of y'all, and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable every time you stir the pot on our police officers. We've had enough, folks. That's right. If you ask questions of Savaggio's political establishment, you must be eliminated. It's disgusting, and it's disgraceful. The government won't hold itself accountable. The DA covers it up. The political majority cancels elections. They keep putting their knees on our necks. Please subscribe to my channel and enable all notifications so you can stay up to date with all of the Leon Valley developments. Thank you for watching and always film the government.